All right. Hello. Mm -mm -mm. What's happening, people? Welcome back. I like the fact that I can alternate between two different intros. I'm going to get more media in the chamber um, so I can just, you know, freshen up a little bit here on the channel. So welcome back to the channel, Football Therapy, with me, your host, Yan. Hope you are doing well, my dear sweet friends, viewers, subscribers, listeners. Um, yep, Chelsea News, the twice daily series here on the channel where I reflect on what's being said about Chelsea, giving you my thoughts, more importantly, as always, asking for yours, and there are lots of thoughts from the mainstream media and indeed Chelsea fans. Of course, Dewsbury Hall certainly split opinion, didn't it, on social media? You could say there was a Dewsbury fallout. Please don't unsubscribe. I can't speak English. Please don't unsubscribe. <laughs> you can hear like the legitimate nerves in my voice then. Uh, yeah, yeah, so look, we move. we're going to speak about um, a bit of Dewsbury, mate. We're going to speak a little bit. Archie Gray, I didn't mention him yesterday. It's just another, like, wonder kid signing 18-year-old from Leeds. We can speak about him a little bit. Um, it sort of it kind of like jumps into the narrative of like, what are we doing, mate? But I will reiterate my position and my thoughts. And of course, always open it up to you guys as well. Um, Romano has referenced again on his playback streaming channel about Chelsea looking at Calafiore as well. So we can maybe talk about that. And uh, Twomi has done a little bit on Mark Yu on The Athletic. And maybe we can end with that and learn a little bit more about this young... Barcelona striker who is who is reportedly going to be in the Chelsea first team so that alone is exciting so that being said thank you for joining me thank you for dropping a like on the video it's it's uh, an easy way to support us content creators um, and uh, if you want to subscribe you're welcome to nearing 185 thousand big ones oh. What an incredible milestone. So thank you to everyone who's subscribed. And if you do choose to subscribe, <coughs> you should hit that sweet, sweet bell, baby. Yeah, baby. All right, mate, let's get into it. First of all, a reaction to the frustration. I understand. I mean, not so much Dewsbury Hall because he's a sort of senior player. But Archie Gray, I don't know much about this kid. I saw Goldberg and some other people say he's a wonder kid. Like, he's a great super talent. And it, obviously, it fits in with Chelsea trying to buy young super talents. Of course, we'll end the video speaking about Mark Yu, who's also 18. Um, are Chelsea fans frustrated because they're like, what are we going to do with all these children set up like all these kindergartens? I don't know. I mean, the fact is, until I see it causing an issue in practice, uh, and many look... I don't want to denigrate opinions here because many people who are big... And I'm an advocate of the Chelsea Academy. You know, I remember years and years ago um, going to a few games. Um, oh, God, it must have been 2017, 18. Like, you know, I, I love watching Chelsea Youth. we got good players. Um, I don't want them to be blocked. But I understand as well that there is amazing footballers across the globe. And um, if there is a optimizing plan to bring them to Chelsea that won't upset the apple cart too much, then I don't have an issue with it. But yeah, well, let's see how it pans out, basically. I'm not going to get all, like, angry. Um, this is just me. Everyone has their own, you know, opinions and, and rights to their opinions. I'm not going to get all, like, annoyed and angry that we're signing good young talent until I see it just cause a massive problem in front of me. For at the moment, you know, there's good value in bringing young talented players so <clears throat> i'm not gonna pretend like i've watched a gray from leeds the 18 year old i mean you know he could easily i mean is he gonna be put into the development team is he gonna be loaned we don't know but ultimately right if you've got loads of good players right and remember last season we had so many injuries so many injuries and we were short and we had to play players out of position and this, that and the other. If we've got so many good young players, and I doubt the squad's going to be 30 plus pe people in the first team. Some will be in the development squad. A bunch will go on loan, I'd imagine. But like, if you've got loads of good players, you're less likely to be screwed. <laughs> because there's just more talent available to you to be utilised. Um, I don't have an issue with it right now. But like I said, let's watch this space and let's see how things develop. Um... 
So I'm not going to say too much about um, Archie Gray um, because I don't know so much about him. And of course, Dewsbury Hall is the big one because that's what's going around all the mainstream media at the moment. Of course, this was an exclusive broken yesterday by David Ornstein of The Athletic. Dewsbury Hall is a 25-year-old, so he's not a child and he's not South American, which is a, a, new, a new thing for Chelsea. Um... He's a player that excelled last season. I saw some people comment um, yesterday in my video saying he was Leicester's best uh, player last season. Um, he's amazing. He obviously won the title in the championship. And obviously Enzo Maresca, the new Chelsea manager, really likes him. Of course, it's not a high-profile sexy signing. People are going, oh, it's a championship player, whatever. But I'll reiterate once more, well, hopefully once more, what I said. <laughs> it sounds like... <laughs> It sounds like I'm getting annoyed saying it because people aren't listening. But that's not the case at all. You guys are very receptive. Um, but I will say it again. Uh, I do feel like you don't always need to sign household name Galactico players, right? You just don't. You just don't. Um, and I also understand in certain positions you might feel frustrated. Like if we signed, I mean, we signed a goalkeeper from the MLS for 14 million and Georgi Petrovic, and he was Chelsea's first team goalkeeper. I don't actually think he's good enough still personally, but many people were okay with that because once the football started and they saw him make some saves, they just forget about where he came from and they just see him in a Chelsea shirt. And this will very much be the case with Dewsbury Hall. You know, content creators, Chelsea fans, uh, media broadcasters will be like, ooh, it's a bit of a low, you know, not not a sexy high-profile signing for Chelsea. But if Dewsbury Hall puts on a Chelsea shirt, plays very well, gives his all, and, you know, is obviously knows Moresca's system and, and executes the football perfectly, then suddenly Chelsea fans will be like, oh, he's quite good, actually, never mind. It's prejudice, obviously, isn't it? Now, I, I, it's, I want to... I'm prejudiced as well, so I want to say that, but I want to also say... I'm not suggesting we build a team full of 17-year-old South Americans and 25-year-old championship players to represent Chelsea Football Club. No, but like I said, Dewsbury Hall's a midfielder coming into a side where we might sell Gallagher, Chuck Wemeka might go on loan, Cassidy probably won't be involved, and we are having extra games in Europe next season. And we don't know, we don't know the availability of the, you know, uh, always injured Lavia. The fact that we've got superstar, high-profile, and I dare say Galactico players in the Chelsea team. You know, I know Caicedo isn't a Galactico, but he's trending massively in the right direction where loads of clubs were willing to spend crazy money on him, like Arsenal and Liverpool. Um, I think in terms of brand, international brand and, super, and quality, I think Enzo Fernandez, you know, world champion Enzo Fernandez is high-profile. So bringing in, you know, a filler player who knows how to play the football, I just don't see an issue with that personally. But that's just me. If we only shop for 17-year-old South Americans and championship players, it will irk me. I'll be like, this This is so far from Chelsea. But the truth is, <laughs> the truth is, the same people who are whinging about us looking at a very good footballer in Dewsbury Hall are the same, uh, many of them are the same people that were whinging that Chelsea were just spending too much money and buying too many players, you know. It's not like we're, like, shopping on the discount shelf looking at championship players because we don't want to spend money. People are just upset, frustrated, um, because it's different, and it's been so different to what we've had. And, of course, we've gone two seasons without winning a trophy, which is not good enough for Chelsea Football Club. Just categorically. Categorically not good enough. But, of course... New ownership, new management, new sporting directors infrastructure, and essentially a whole new friggin' squad and direction. If there was ever a time that you would say, mm, okay, just this once, you'd say now. But it can't carry on. Um, anyway, I wanted to just sort of react to that because people are frustrated. I'm not telling people not to be frustrated. It's very important because I've got strong opinions. But the last thing I want is to become one of these content creators to say that if you are, you know, if your position isn't the same as mine, that you're a knobhead or whatever. Do you know what I mean? And, and I'm right and you're wrong. I'm not saying I'm right. I am quite a zen dude. I'm not, I'm just not in the business of saying I'm right and you're wrong. But I am in the business of stating my opinion and showing my working. Respectfully, you know. Let's just be nice to each other, mate. Do you know what I mean? Right. Romano on his playback channel yesterday in the evening said Chelsea are looking for a talented left-footed defender. Well, they've got one 
in Levi Colwell. Benoit Badishiel does have believers still. I don't have anything against Badishiel, but these men are both left footers. Um, but apparently we're looking for another one. <clears throat> Interesting. And Ricardo Calafiore is one of the best in the world at the moment. Italian bias there from Romano. Yeah, he's good. Um, he is good, Calafiore. He's young. Um, of course, he scored that really unlucky own goal, but he also got a great assist. Um, amazing season at Bologna last campaign. It's speculated that he will follow um, his uh, manager, Motta, to Juve, but maybe not. Liverpool may be looking at him. and uh, But Maresca apparently likes him, and Chelsea apparently like him. I think it'll be cool. I, you know... I'd probably quite like him. The thing is, if we need to buy, if we need to buy a left-footed defender, if we want one, yeah, great, Calafiori. All these people that are getting wound up for looking at Archie Gray and Dewsbury Hall. There you go. Here's a guy starring at the Euros who's like, you know, a Champions League footballer. Um, is that, cause that well, Maybe that will appease the unhappy people. Do you know what I mean? He is a high-profile, awesome signing. And he's young still as well. He's early 20s. We did look at his stats briefly. I don't think they're particularly, like, the stats... He's more of an eye test player, I think, than a stats test player. And they both are very, very important, of course. Stats can't always entirely quantify the good performances of a player. They simply can't. In the same way as, like, you can watch a footballer have an absolute stinker and say the stats were good. I think this happened with Declan Rice for England recently. He looked terrible. I think he's looked terrible for most of the tournament. And there was a game, I think, with Statman Dave, like put some stats together and he said it made him look like he had an amazing game which simply wasn't true and to be honest <laughs> these sort of like um you know consolidated stats to try and present a player having a good game can actually undermine the whole stats world sometimes when a player looks like they have a complete stinker i digress though um calafiori i'd be interested you know he's, he's a pretty cool dude as well he looks pretty cool he looks like a sort of throwback italian defender um yeah Enzo Maresca's Italian, our new gaffer. Let it be. Chelsea, let it be, let it be, let it be, yeah. Um, and Chelsea have done a white with Italian players in the past. And indeed managers. What Italian managers have we had? Viali, uh, Conte, Sari. We've definitely had other Italian managers. That's going to annoy me. Ranieri! <laughs> <laughs> Definitely pulls it to look. <laughs> and how and Di Matteo, Champions League winning, of course. And how could I have forgotten the eyebrow himself, Carlo Ancelotti? Um, yeah. So Chelsea and Italians do well. <clears throat> so I'm hoping the same goes with Enzo Maresca. And I'm hoping we maybe. I mean, I'd, I'd be quite pleased if we signed um, Ricardo Calafiori. So what do you think? Comment down below and let's talk strikers. All right, so yes, the great unknown, more kindergarten talent coming to Chelsea Football Club. Um, to whom he's written about Mark Yu. More people have asked questions. We looked at him, and uh, there's loads of media coming out about the young Brazil centre forward at the moment. So, as it looks like it's, uh, it's you know, it's, we've got the here we go, it's happening. <clears throat> Let's learn a little bit more. Let's learn with Tumi on The Athletic. It says, it, he has written this. Let us begin with a transfer hypothetical, guys. If you were presented with an opportunity to sign an 18-year-old with seven senior competitive appearances for Barcelona to his name for little more than five million pounds, would you take it? <clears throat> Well, the answer isn't easy, yes, and one you might arrive at before you even ask the name of the po name and position of the player. Chelsea know a lot more than that, of course, about Mark Yu. The striker will move from the Camp Nou to Stamford Bridge this summer after having the £5 million release clause activated. He fits the age profile and the talent profile of Chelsea's youth-focused recruitment structure. It has been set up to identify... Um, and has enough professional seasoning with Barcelona to come straight into Maresca's first team squad and provide competition, or at least cover, for Nico Jackson. Huge! Huge! This little kid is going to be a Chelsea first team striker. And it will feel good. You know, like, oh, look, it's Chelsea, like, shopping in the discount aisle and they have to play this kid in the Premier League or whatever. Or, look at this kid. 
a sensation and we only spent five million on him. You mugs. <laughs> That's the kind of like bragging rights you want, right? Uh, so Gu made headlines, of course. We've spoken about this. He, saw, he scored on his debut against Bilbao. Um, and uh, he, he, sh- he got the shot underneath Unai Simon, the uh, Spanish number one goalkeeper the, for the international team. And it made him the club's youngest and fastest debutant scorer in La Liga, which is huge, really. Two months later, he also scored on his Champions League debut. Didn't know that. Uh, arcing a run towards the six-yard box box and meeting a free kick with a guided header just inside the near post and a shock 3-2 loss for Barcelona to Antwerp. As a prospect, mobile, physical, with sharp goal scoring instincts, he is enticing. Um, as a value proposition, he's irresistible. Oh! No one could be upset with this signing, surely. So Chelsea co-sporting directors Lawrence Stewart and Paul Wayne Stanley have been tasked with succession planning in every position. Uh, see the depth chart below. This is something that Toomey referenced in his previous article that we reacted to um, a couple of videos ago. Um, by any successful, excuse me, but any successful transfer strategy must allow room for a healthy dash of opportunism and acquiring Gyu at this price is too good of an opportunity to pass up. The terms make it a rare deal that Chelsea cannot lose uh, and one they could win big, even in the worst case scenario that Gyu is not good enough to make the grade at Stamford Bridge. His reported 50k a week salary is unlikely to be uh, unlikely so honor, um, onerous that it's impossible to offload. Yeah, we've spoken about players we can't get off the books um, because they're on massive salaries. And he will be a, you know, a well-bred La Masia striker on not massive weight. 50k a week is first team wages, by the way. Big time for an 18-year-old. And Barcelona really were desperately trying to keep him, but they just couldn't offer him anywhere near that because they are hashtag bro <coughs> Excuse me. If um, if he's any better than that, his transfer fee is so insignificant when amortized over five years that any future sale essentially becomes, here's that phrase, pure profit. In the best case scenario, Chelsea just signed a first team contributor in a premium position for almost nothing. Gu's minuscule buyout clause is a disaster for Barcelona. Oh, I inject it. <laughs> who is um who in their dire financial state must rely more heavily than ever on La Masia for elite for on-field elite talent and off-field revenue. Just how good it turns out to be for Chelsea depends in large part on whether or not they can create the right conditions for their new striker to build on the trajectory he set up at Camp Nou last season. Yeah, that's another thing like I do think Chelsea in a lot of ways, are being sensible with how they're bringing in kids. Like, you know, the whole Kendry Pies thing, we've signed him, he's already come to Cobham twice, he's got used to the surroundings, he's trained, he's learning English, so by the time he's 18, he'll speak English, hopefully, and he will um, and he will be acquainted to Cobham. Like, that's sensible, right? Um, that might not prove, that may not prove easy to do so in terms of uh, getting Q his ultimate developmental environment, do you know what I mean? Chelsea won a top four finish in the Premier League this season. Their competitors in that particular race will not be giving significant minutes, even off the bench, to many 18-year-olds. Gu does at least appear to have the size, physicality, and athleticism to compete with bruising opposition centre-backs. But he does not offer the proven pedigree that many supporters feel is lacking in Mareska's squad. <clears throat> yeah, this kind of goes back to what I was saying with, you know, people like... Pearl clutching at the idea of Archie Gray or even Dewsbury Hall, but Dewsbury Hall was, you know, won a championship title, which is definitely prepares you for Premier League football in many ways, but he's played in the Premier League as well. And he's mid twenties, you know. But I'm not gonna talk about Dewsbury Hall anymore because it's doing my head in. How the striker pecking order shakes up at Stamford Bridge will be worth monitoring, of course. Brewer's likely departure this summer creates a real space behind Jackson, and Chelsea are mindful that they may need a squad capable of navigating between wait for it, 75 and 80 matches across all competitions in the next 12 months, of course, including the Club World Cup. One moment. Ah, sorry guys, I had to quickly take a very quick 
phone call. So Chelsea could be playing 75 to 80 matches next season, including the, including the Club World Cup, which of course is annexed at the end of the Premier League campaign. Q will be hoping Maresca does not view Nkunku as a number nine. But Chelsea also have David Datro Fofana, who had a predict productive loan spell at Burnley, and another teenage project, David Washington, who impressed for the development squad. Um, I think both of them are looking at loans for different reasons. Datro Fofana could be a starting striker for a good team. <clears throat> he should be that. David Washington proved he wasn't ready for senior football in that small cameo, but did very well in the development team. Um, I imagine he's learned English well, and I feel like he should do a championship loan. My opinion, and of course, we've got academy prospects. Donnell McNeely is very good. Dujan Whispers, uh, Whispers, Richards, known as Whisper, the Jamaican centre forward. Both the same age as Gu, but both need sp uh, space to spread their wings. So really, it looks like all the other strikers could go on loans, and Gu could be... The guy, the second striker, the, dare I say, competition. Imagine if he becomes Chelsea's first choice striker. I'm not nothing against Jackson. I'm pleased Jackson's been given a fair crack of the whip, but, you know, it would be funny to steal a Barcelona player for nothing and him become a bit of a Chelsea superstar. Um, yeah, man, look, this goes on. Of course, Chelsea have looked at other strikers, um, and but when they have a look at Gu, they can decide what they have there, essentially. I'm oddly excited about this. I do get excited about Chelsea signing big names because I've grown up. You know, obviously, I watched Chelsea like when I was young in the 90s or whatever. They're pretty good. Enough. By the way, Chelsea were a good team in the 90s. This whole like pre Abramovich stuff, like we were some, some ex insignificant team, is nonsense. But, you know, as an adult, I've enjoyed Chelsea signing star players. But I also enjoy bargains. Because it makes you just look like you know what you're doing, you know? That you're not just throwing money around. Bargains are good as well. So let me know what you guys think. As always, I'll leave it to you guys to converse in the comment section and let me know your thoughts. Uh, thank you for supporting the content as always. If you do want to share the content, if you enjoy it, that's a nice way of supporting the channel. And um, I hope to see you guys back. Peace.